Hello everyone. In the last video, we have finished our program. Right now, it's time to build and test it. I will write the code for testing it. And in the meantime, I want this to build, but I was not in the right directory. Okay, so while it's building, let's actually write the test. So for Rust testing, maybe you are familiar with it. We are going to use this config test. Inside, we will have a mod called test. I will just actually copy the import statements in here as well, because we don't need to be worrying about those ones for the time being. And I will explain what each of them does when we get to it. Let's have a test case. Let's call this test counter. First of all, we need a program ID. Inside this test case, since we are doing it in Rust, not in frontend, we actually need to mock some of the variables. In case we were doing in frontend, we would have an actual account that we can store data in. But in here, we don't have one. So we need to create a mock account as well as a mock key and a mock program ID. They are not that difficult, so we can just go with pop key default. Uh, we will do similar thing for the key. It's also going to be default. So we need some Lamport. So this is the single decimal amount of Solana. It's called Lamport. So instead of 0 0.00001 Solana, we are referring to this as Lamport, just like in Satoshi. And also we need a data vector. So it's going to have a fixed size in the beginning so that it can hold our data that store inside of it. So let's call this a size of U32 since we are storing a U32 value inside the account. We also need an owner, which is also going to be pop key default. And with these values, actually we can create an account. So I will actually copy and paste the account creation. We will just take a look at what's contained inside of an account in Solana. We need a U in the beginning. So we need a key and we need some Boolean values such as is signer and is writable. So is signer decides if this account is going to sign a transaction. Is writable actually defines if it's going to be writable. Executable is going to be false since this is not a smart contract or a program in Solana's case. Something unique to Solana is that every account that is going to be allocating a space in the blockchain needs to pay a rent. So this is the rent epoch. It means that when the next rent is due to. That is why actually we have this clock epoch. Now we actually need forgotten to add this to semicolons. As you remember, in our process instruction, we are getting an accounts, which is a vector. So we need to turn this account into a vector of accounts. So let's do this with this line. We don't need to actually clone it, we can just give it. And after that, we have the program ID, which is not going to be used in our case. We have the program ID, we have the accounts right now. Only thing we need is instruction data. Let's create the separate instruction data. So I will call this increment instruction data. It's going to be a vector of U8. Maybe you remember from the variance, increment is going to be zero. So inside this U8 vector, we are just going to store zero. And let's actually copy and paste this. The second one is update, and the third one is reset. So right now we have the variants, we have the instruction data. So actually we are ready to call our first function. Let's start with increment first, then we can decrement it. So this process instruction is getting the program ID from here, accounts from here, and instruction data. But instruction data for this case is increment instruction data. It's also going to take all of this as reference. Let's unwrap the result. So right now we have called the increment instruction. So we expect our counter value to be incremented by one. We can check this in Rust with an assert equal statement. Inside it's going to get a counter account and try from slice, just like what we have done in here as well. So we are going to get the counter value inside this counter account. And we are going to see if it's one or not. Inside this try from slides, we are going to give accounts zero. The first one, we can just say account, but it would be applicable for other smart contracts as well if we write like this. And we are going to borrow this value. Then we are going to actually unwrap this value. Then from the unwrap, we will have this counter ready for our access. And we are going to check if it's 
equal to one. We need to do, we can do this for all of the functions in order to save time. I will just copy and paste. So instead of this increment, you will have a decrement. And when we decrement it, it's going to be zero. In the meantime, while we are going on, let's do the cargo test for already existing features. And it's going to take some time. Let's move on with the update. As you know, the update is the only different one because it requires the update value. For that, I will just give 33 as U32. So the value is 33. And since our state holds the U32 variable, we are going to set it as U32. So that will have no problems with the typecasting. Let's make this update instruction data to extend from slice. Inside, let's give this update value. And uh, we need to give this as bytes since we are giving all of the instruction data as bytes. And since the process instruction is looking for a vector of bytes, we need to convert this to bytes as well. We can just do that with two LE bytes. And after that, we are actually going to do a similar thing to here. And the line underneath it so i will copy and paste so actually we need to define this as mutable since they are not mutable by default it's giving us an error saying that you cannot modify so we have explicitly say mutable in here let's switch this to update instruction data after this is executed i want this to be 33 and we can just finish off with the reset so i again copy and paste I just switch the instruction data we are giving to process instruction to reset instruction data. We want this counter value to be zero. So let's do a cargo format and let's execute cargo test. The tests are passing. I actually want to show you one last thing, which is cargo test with print statements inside in case you need it in your own test cases for cargo test. We can use double dash followed by no capture. This way it's going to print out every print statement we had. So in our case, we had only one, but in case you are trying to debug your test and something is not working correctly, you can just use this to see what each print line is doing. This is it for our first program in Solana. And in the next one, we are going to move on to a relatively complex project.